can hypnotherapy increase sexual desire? Absolutely, yes. You're hypnotizing yes. him to imagine <laughs> blood going to his penis. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna supersize it. That's hypnotism orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Love Bites by Dr. Tara Podcast. Today with me is LA's most fabulous hypnotherapist, Penny Way. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. I'm so excited to be hypnotized. I know. It's Are you exciting. excited to yeah. uh, hypnotize me? Yes, it's a very, very amazing, surreal experience. It feels like you're sitting in a warm bath. So. <laughs> I'm very excited for you too. <laughs> also, a disclaimer, this is not medical advice. So make sure that you discuss with your doctors, your coaches, your, your own therapist um, to before you engage in practices like this. But also, you can reach out to Penny Way and yes. let's see if she can show you the way. <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> so how was your morning? You had an orgasmic morning? <laughs> I did. It's, every day, I think, is a marathon. You just get up and you just run and you just get get your life going and you know I, th I think it's great when you when you do things you love and you have passion for something it just feels like you're ready to go and and every day is like a new day and you have purpose in life and meaning so yeah let's yeah. say so <laughs> so uh i've have i've been very excited about this session because i wanted to show my audience what a hypnosis session is like yes. and uh, i'm like the guinea pig in this situation <laughs> and of course because it's love bites by dr tara podcast we want to focus on sexual wellness relationship wellness self love body love Love and all that jazz. Yes. Uh, so I want this hypnosis session to focus on perhaps one of the most important factors in a person's level of sexual self-esteem and self-worth is how they view their bodies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if you hate your body, it's hard to have high self-esteem. Yes, right? I it's agree. It's very correlated. So I think in this session, it would be fun fun <laughs> and relaxing for me to be hypnotized to love my body more and feel more confident. Yes, I agree. Yeah, it's it's hypnosis is a really effective tool to help you feel very comfortable in who you are. So your subconscious mind is the biggest part of your brain that helps to either propel you forward in life or it also holds you back. So everyone has these like negative belief systems about themselves. There are associations or neuropathways in the brain, or they have positive belief systems. And so sometimes if you're feeling really, really insecure in your body, or you don't feel like you're comfortable in your own skin, it's because you have some type of negative belief system in your subconscious mind and that you have to actually heal it. And so all these type of feelings that you might have, they come from the inside out, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're talking about sexual wellness and like living authentically and also feeling comfortable in your own skin and freedom and empowerment as men and women. Part of that and having fun in the bedroom has to do with also, like you're saying, feeling comfortable in your own body, mm -hmm. how, how you are in sync with it and how you move with it and how you feel about yourself. So the, the more confident you are, the better able you be able to play in the bedroom and try new things and satisfy yourself and another person. And we love that. <laughs> we love that. Now, I'm curious, what is your response to people that say hypnotherapy is BS? I tell them they've never tried it. And also it's based on, you know, neuroscience. And these studies have been done with the brain for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah, how old is yeah. therapy? It's it's a very, very old practice. It's it's considered, you know, in Western, I think, you know, medicine or psychology, um, more as an alternative form mm -hmm. of But it's been cognitive. around for like yes. hundreds of years? Yes, yes, yes. Or absolutely. Thousands. It's probably thousands, but okay. hundreds of years. For sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's, and it's still here. <laughs> yes. It's still considered cognitive behavioral therapy. It's uh -huh. a form of that. Uh -huh. And uh, what the hypnotherapist is using is more with the subconscious mind. You do some talk therapy. And then in part of the session, like the last 10, 15 minutes, you'll do some hypnosis. But I find it very much more effective than sometimes traditional talk therapy because when people want to change something or a pattern in their life or something that they're like sick of and they can't 
can't stand about themselves or a situation and they get stuck in a in a rut, you you have to actually go deeper than just talking about it cognitively. That part is very important, you know, be able to process with someone, but you have to go into the subconscious mind and change all the patterns there. Mm -hmm. And that and so when you're talking about like self-esteem and like feeling insecure about yourself or even comfortable in your own body or how it looks like your own perception of yourself, those thought forms usually are created when you're a child. Mm -hmm. And it's usually about from your environment or your primary caregiver or what was fed to you. Oh, it's yeah. my mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's my mom. Always <laughs> Love you, mom. Love you so much. But you know, like my mom's uh, health conscious and yes. still is. So yes. I think health conscious is, is good, you know, but yeah. I think there is a line between like, oh, I'm gonna stop eating this donut because I look too fat versus like, oh, I'm going to have a bite because that gives me pleasure. And then I'm going to make sure that I feel good later on today and not have tummy ache. Yes. Right. Like I feel like there's a difference between that and perhaps the way she was delivering messages to me as a child was more towards like, oh, you don't want to look fat. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. I think parents sometimes like they don't realize how like powerful good intention yes but bad delivery yes yeah. especially with asian parents like yeah. they're not the best at like emotional, <laughs> emotional nurturing affirmations and everything or delivery yeah and i think their intention is good but it comes out wrong it could be like loss in translation the language barrier yeah. but i think a lot of times they're just like i think asian parents are like really blunt yeah. and they they're they come from a fear-based way of parenting yeah so it's kind of like don't eat this so that you don't get fat like this yeah. rather than it would be better if you make a different choice because it's healthier for you. Right. Like reframing it like that. You don't get tummy ache. Yes. Or if you eat too much sugar, it could lead to diabetes yeah. or, you know, Last year yes. I went home. Uh, as soon as I land, landed at the airport in Bangkok, I walked out, saw my parents. Both of my parents came <laughs> to get me. Like, you know, every time I go home, both of them come to get me. It was just so, so sweet. That's Even though, so like, sweet. I'm a 35-year-old woman. Um, and <laughs> the first thing my dad said was, you gain weight. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Like, weight is so so centered in my family. Yes. And everyone's so skinny. Like, you've seen my family. They're so skinny. Yeah. Like I am the largest person in my family. I am never skinny shaming. Like you're beautiful. Like yes. whatever size yes. is, right? Maybe you're yes. really skinny. Maybe you're big. Like all of that is beautiful. What matters is how you feel. A absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So should we yeah. get into it? Sure. If you'd like to, let's so, do it. <laughs> some body confidence hypnosis session. Yes. So we'll see if uh, hypnotherapy <laughs> helps us with sexual confidence. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is just get comfy and cozy. Okay. And so you've done this before. And yes. I love that you have your cute little pillow there. My little pillow. <laughs> so cute. Hello. This is my emotional <laughs> support pillow. Yes. <laughs> yes. I am ready. Okay. And so just get comfy, cozy, and then adjust your body as needed. And then I'm going to just guide you through some relaxation techniques so that you can go into your subconscious mind. And I'll know when that happens for you. And then we're going to take you to a beautiful body of water since you respond so well to that. And then we're going to, we are going to talk about um, the body image and being very, very confident in your own skin. And I'm going to give you some positive suggestions for change. Sounds good for you? Yes. Yay. Okay. So Tara, take a couple deep breaths in slowly and deeply. And these are way down deep in the belly breaths so that with every exhale, you're going to exhale all negatives and stress. And then you're going to inhale all positives and relaxation. Very good. And as you continue to breathe deeply, you're going to release any negativity through the exhale from any part of your day that actually has been just a little bit chaotic. And then we're going to create this very safe space for you right now. Very good. Taking deep breaths in, excellent. And now when I ask you to open your eyes, open your eyes at the number one, and then we're gonna close your eyes at the number zero. And we're just gonna do it a few times, okay? At one, one, zero, one, zero, one, 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 and zero. Deep sleep, resting even deeper to this wonderful state of relaxation. The body and the mind are connected. 
and open to all of the positive suggestions that are here for you today. Excellent. Now take a couple deep breaths again. And we're going to imagine or visualize a very beautiful white light. And this white light is going to ground you and relax every muscle, bone, and tendon in your body. And we're going to start from the feet. And we're going to warm and relax the bottoms of your feet, the soles of your feet, and your toes and your ankles. Very good. And as you continue to breathe deeply, the body and the mind continue to connect and become in sync. And you're completely in control of this entire experience. And then we're going to imagine that this white light is going to flow up into your calves now, relaxing the calves with every breath you take. Excellent. And then we're going to flow this white light up into the knees, and we're going to relax the knees. We're going to relax the thighs. We're going to bring this light up all the way up into the hips now with every breath you take. And we're going to relax the pelvic floor and the pelvic area and the hips. You can adjust your body as you need to. And then breathe this beautiful calming white light, excellent, all the way up into your solar plexus, your belly. And we're going to allow this white light to actually cleanse and clear the belly, this entire space right here. The solar plexus is the area that is connected to your self-esteem and your self-worth. So we're going to really, really let this white light relax the belly area. Excellent. Then as you continue to breathe deeply now, bring the light up through the back, lower back, upper back, and into the heart space and into the lungs, into the heart chakra. Very good. You're doing so well. And we're going to relax the lungs and your rib cage. And we're going to flow this white light up into the shoulders now with every breath you take. Excellent. Relaxing the shoulders and all the way up into the throat chakra and into the face now, your lower jaw. Relax the lower jaw. Excellent. And you're responding so well into the mouth and the lips, the cheeks now, relaxing the nose and the eyes, the top of the forehead, and between the eyes, your pineal gland, and open up the pineal gland now, excellent, with the white light, and allow this light to actually sh to shower and flow right all over you, as if you're sitting in a bubble of white light, excellent. Now, whatever your mind can see and believe, you will achieve. So imagine or visualize, picture, pretend yourself, stop standing at, a, at the top of a staircase of 20 steps. This is a very strong and sturdy staircase. And let's imagine the color gold for good health, abundance, prosperity, manifestation. You're doing so well. And imagine or visualize yourself in a superior state where you are feeling confident in your body. You're maybe wearing your favorite outfit that makes you feel confident about yourself, like a power outfit. You're maybe standing in a position that is a powerful position. You're hearing the sounds of all the people around you that support you and love you and adore you. And with all your senses, just hear their praise of you, their love for you, and feel it too. And we're going to crystallize this sense of self-worth that is strong and confident being in your own body, in your own skin, feeling really, really safe and secure. And we're going to walk down this staircase of 20 steps. At 20, very good, you're doing so well. 19, 18, going even deeper at 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, going even deeper now. At 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. Zero means deep sleep, resting even deeper to this quiet and comfortable state of relaxation. You're doing so well, Tara. Imagine or visualize now that you're walking to a path that leads you to an ocean, and the ocean is this beautiful, warm, and safe space. And you feel the warmth of the sand on your feet. And we're gonna find a place to sit right now, and allow your body to actually sit in this warmth and you feel the sun's rays on your skin. 
And if you imagine or visualize, you can actually see the light dancing on the water. It's very calm waves. And it may be a sunset because we are going to actually do some work to go within. Very good. And you can take a deep breath in and you can smell the fresh ocean breeze. And if you imagine, you can see little sandpipers making little peace signs along the sand. Excellent. So now you're in this beautiful, warm, and safe space. And we are going to create some positive change for you so that when you are feeling like you want to be playful or intimate with your partner or you're out in the world that you are feeling comfortable in your own skin. So in the next coming days right now, Tara, as you begin to create this change for yourself, you are starting to feel a lot more comfortable in your skin. In fact, whenever you're in the bedroom or whenever you're out in the public and you have to present yourself in the world, you feel safe, confident, and secure in your own skin. And that no matter what anyone says to you from the outside world or even your negative thought forms or ego that puts you down, you're going to actually hear the word stop in your mind and you're going to change that thought into something positive. Anytime you feel a negative thought form coming across your mind, you're going to hear the word stop. You're going to pause and you're going to really take a moment to reframe your mind and remember that you are a beautiful, amazing, loving human being that is full of light and power and presence that you and everyone that you engage with or touch in your life or someone who's a part of your life feels this warmth and this love and this light. And the first thing you have to do is give it to yourself. So allow yourself to take that in, that warmth, that light, that love, give it to yourself. Because the only way we can love others is actually we have to love ourselves first. So taking that deep breath in now, reminding yourself of self-love and self-worth. Excellent. And with that, I'm going to count you out from zero to five. Taking deep breath in now. And we're going to allow yourself to come out of this beautiful state of hypnosis at zero. Coming up at one, feeling more and more self-love and confidence in yourself. Two, see the word calm on your forehead, calm and confident. Three, four, feeling your body in the chair now, being very aware of your body and the sounds around you here in this room. And five is eyes open and wide awake. One, two, three, four, five, eyes open and wide awake. Much better than before. Yay. <laughs> Whew. Wow. <laughs> it always like feels so um like tingly in my hands. In your hands. Yeah. yeah. Is that normal? Yes, it can be normal for some people. Yeah. It's good because you're feeling, you know, your connection through your body and your nervous system is affected here in a very good way. Okay. It's helping you relax. And then when you're in hypnosis, your mind is very mentally alert, but your body's physically relaxed. So just you can do some stretching yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And then get back into your body. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ooh. I was very relaxed. That's good. Would you say I am like very receptive? Yes, you are. I bet. Yeah. 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 Yes. And then, I feel receptive. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're an easy, feel, easy, easy patient, easy client. Easy I feel like student. if you're like, okay, go rob a bank, I'll be like, no, okay. No. <laughs> Going makes sense. I don't have that much power control, but, <laughs> but it's but so I interesting. It, I experienced the same thing again. I couldn't move my hands. Yes, that's okay. That's In okay. the session. Is that's that, okay. That's great. Is that something that happens to other people? Yes, because they're just, they're very relaxed and, and you, you and really... I kept trying to move my hands, but so the yes. first session, I had my hands, like, op I had my palms open like this and I was laying down, right? And I couldn't move my hands at all. This time, I had my hands crossed like this and I couldn't move them apart. I was like, 
Okay, I was going to move like this, but then I couldn't move them apart. That's totally fine. Actually, you don't want to move too much during hypnosis. Yeah, it's usually some when I'm doing it on a client like you, you just feel really comfortable and you're just sitting there and it feels like really deep, deep meditation. You're in the theta state. So so the body's not moving too much anyways. So you're just chilling. You're yeah. just chilling. But your mind is really open and can hear everything that I'm saying to you. Right. And then for the people I was watching. everything yeah. that you said. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. Yeah. I, I saw the that. stairs. I saw the stairs, the ladders, stairs. The yes. stairs were gold. Yes. All the people that was like, Tara, we love you. Yes. And I, I imagine like walking towards like the ocean. And like how warm the sand was. Yes. And it felt so orgasmic in my feet, like <laughs> in between my toes. I remember sitting down in like the ocean water and I smelled ocean water. Good. And That's great. Yeah, I remember just walking into the water and like just floated Floating. for the whole time. Oh, I love and that. It felt so comfortable. Yeah, it's powerful. I can imagine like if I yeah. I wonder what kind of effects it would have on me if I did this like every day for 30 days? You, go, It would be very powerful. I mean, usually it takes about 21 days to actually form a new neuropathway or new habit or new way of thinking. 21 days to actually like get rid of an old habit. So if even if you did it like every day or once a week is good enough too, mm -hmm. and you're working with someone or you have a, a hypnosis tape that I make for you and you're listening to it, You what you want to do is practice your mind and teach your mind a new way of thinking about yourself. So I'm very <laughs> curious, do people get hypnotherapy for clinical issues? Yes. Because you know? like for me, yes, like feeling more love for my body, showing up more confidently, like that's, everyone can get more of that, right? Yes. Like every single day. But I wonder <laughs> like, do people go for uh, hypnotherapy f with their clinical issues? Yes, they do. And, and and then the hypnotherapist hopefully is like well-trained that you don't do anything out of your scope, but they'll come to me for if it's like chronic fears or phobias, um, if it's for hypnosis for, you know, dental work, mm -hmm. dental phobia, chronic pain, mm -hmm. um, people who have cancer or uh, any type of autoimmune disease, you can use hypnosis to actually mm -hmm. complement the care that they're already getting from their primary caregiver. Right. Yeah, yeah they're, like they're not doctor. a substitute, a supplement. It's a supplement. Yeah, yeah it's a supplement. And it, it's especially good for any type of work that you need to do about self-worth, self-esteem, any of those things. If, if, if a person has like, for instance, an eating disorder or something mm -hmm. or body dysmorphia, they're going to probably work with a clinical psychologist and yeah. another- Dietitian. Yes, another yeah. professional. But then I would complement that work. Right. The work that I would do would probably raising their self-esteem, self-worth, mm -hmm. change their negative thought patterns about themselves so that they have a better image about who they are. So yes, you can use it for a lot of different things. Okay. So in terms of <laughs> A lot of different things. I told my friends that I'm going to interview a hypnotherapist, and one of my friends asked uh, if you can hypnotize someone to not have a certain fetish. For example, oh, they have like a foot fetish. Like, <laughs> can hypno? And no shame in the foot yes. fetish game, you know. Yeah, but, but no this shame. Was an actual question from a friend that oh, was what? like, "Are you able to? Do you do you feel like hypno hypnotherapy?" can help people get out of certain fetishes that maybe they don't want to have, but they do. Yes, absolutely. Because hypnosis can be used to help raise your natural hormones and dopamine levels or serotonin, all the happy hormones. So a lot of times when people have like fetishes or addictions, they are compelled to do one thing or be excited about one thing because it raises their dopamine levels, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just like all these happy hormones are like firing up in their brain. And what you can do is you can do what we call like sort of aversion therapy. So say that person comes in and they really want to get rid of their foot fetish. And they're like, man, it's cost too much to do this foot <laughs> fetish thing. I keep buying all these old <laughs> ass shoes on the internet. I keep smelling these shoes. You know, there's a, it's a real thing, it's you know, really, like I know it about really it. Is, yeah. You know, and, and they're just like, I just got to stop it. It's just getting out of control. It's affecting uh -huh. my life. Uh -huh. You know, then they would come to me and I, and I would do a little bit of like that aversion therapy, which is basically what, what they th find the, the real reason why they caught on to that habit uh -huh. first, heal that source of the issue. And then we would, we would, it's almost like helping someone stop smoking. During it's, the hypnosis. 
during the hypnosis, it's basically you're telling them those suggestions for change. It, it could be something like, you know, I am not interested in this anymore. I do not want to do this. It's bad for me. You know, it's not good for me. I want to stop this habit. And you can tell yourself those things through hypnosis mm -hmm. and then to release the the pattern. And then what I would also do is probably help raise his natural um, happy hormones mm -hmm. naturally through the body without the use of the foot fetish. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so well, you can. <laughs> you know, um, one of the most asked questions is, can hypnosis, oh, well, can hypnotherapy increases sexual desire? Absolutely. Yes. You oh, can that's a big claim. Yeah. Because, you know, people, <laughs> lots of people that experience sexu low sexual desire have the desire to want to increase their sexual yes. desire, you know, like yes. they want to feel horny more often, but it's just, <laughs> it doesn't come to the body. Do you feel like, like for real, for real, you think hypnotherapy can increase sex drive, like sexual desire? Yes, I think absolutely. And I also feel like if it's a male, they need to actually work with their doctor, mm -hmm. their primary caregiver, and to see what their testosterone levels are because testosterone drops as men age and get older, right? And us, for us women, our testosterone spikes, you know, mm -hmm. goes up after like 30. So we get more of that sexual desire. So, you know, when if you're working with a hypnotherapist and you want to tell them your concerns, you know, I work with people who have they consider like sexual dysfunction mm -hmm. or erectile Yeah, like if a man comes to you or, or a person, a person comes to you and, yes. and say like, hey, like, you know, I went to medical doctors, yes. got all my testing done. I'm fine. All the hormones are fine. I yes. just don't know why like I no longer want to have sex with my spouse. Like, yes. Do you feel like, yes, let's work on this? We can work on it. Yes. Okay. And it could be, I mean, the source of desire comes from many places. And it, if it's something where the the relationship needs to re be repaired in some ways or a connection has to be sh shifted so that they're more connected that's something you can work on but if it's their own you know desire towards their their lover that can be worked on through hypnosis so usually i will find out like Ooh. when the change occurred or what happened or and then it almost like sometimes I joke around. It sounds like a soft porn kind of script <laughs> because wait, because but <laughs> hypnosis can uh, um, revitalize attraction for your partner. You can use it in that way because it has to do with your feelings and perceptions towards another human being. If but th this the person has to desire this though. Yeah. This th this yeah. is not a tool to be used to manipulate right. any human being. No, no, no. You no, know, no. so like Do not manipulate like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they'll come to me and they're like, it's a real concern. Like this one gentleman came to me and he was a real concern. He wasn't that, he, he wasn't that old, you know, it was probably like early fifties. And, and, uh, I remember he, he came to me and he was just like, I, I want to desire my, my wife and I, I love her. Um, but there's like a disconnect between my brain and my, my penis. penis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so and so we went through it, you know, and we got into it and the reason why. And then when then I would do hypnosis on helping him create that connection with her again and to imagine seeing her and doing things to her and whatever it is. And also to feel the blood running through his body, mm -hmm. to be super aware of his body. So you're hypnotizing yes. him to imagine <laughs> blood going to his penis. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> super yeah. my penis, please. I'm going to supersize <laughs> it for you. No, but it's obviously all clinical hypnotherapy and it's all very, very, you know, professional and everything. Yes, professional. Yes, and it's professional yeah. proper. And then, but, but we are allowing him to actually like feel his body again and or him or her, mm -hmm. the blood in your body. That's so important. It is. Because when you feel desire, you, you get excited yeah. and you feel the hormones in the nervous system and everything gets excited and you, you kind of feel desire. Desire is in the brain and it connect and it's in your body. Yeah. So allowing the person to actually feel that again and to see that person in, in a loving way and to want it's to- powerful. Yes. And to want to please that person and to be pleased. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> Talking about penises. Yeah. <laughs> my sponsor today uh, is blushvibe.com. So go to blushvibe.com for this male masturbator. Because, you know, Ooh. 
if you're if you have a penis and you're masturbating, uh, you don't want to always just use your hands. Like you want to mix it up, have a variety because sometimes like you use your hands, you get used to it. Then having sex with a partner becomes like not as interesting. So you want to make sure that there is a variety in your self play. And this is stroke. It is a male masturbator, and you can basically put your penis into this hole. It vibrates. It vibrates while your penis is in this hole, and you just, you know, have fun masturbating with this beautiful, very luxurious masturbator. So go to blushvibe.com. So many different toys. <laughs> I'm so grateful for this conversation. But before we let you go, we got to play the game. Okay. And this is a game that we do in all my episodes. It's called Five Quickies with Dr. Tara. Okay. So it's like a rapid round. Okay. I'm going to give you a word or a sentence and then you just have a quick answer. Okay, cool. Okay. Number one, having an orgasm during hypnosis. Have I ever had one? Have during- you ever had one? Have you ever given one? <laughs> I've had I've had uh, clients actually have sort of like semi orgasms during hypnosis if I'm working on sexual dysfunction with them. That's hypnotism orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, are you a lover girl? Am I a lover girl? Like, do I love humans and people? <laughs> Yes. And it's like you just love love. I, you're like yeah, always yeah. in a relationship. A, you're like yeah. giving it all. You're a lover I'm a, girl. I'm a lover, not a fighter. And I, I love talking about love. Love is like my favorite topic of all. Love. And discussing love, anything about love, the the interplay between men and women and women and women and all that. It's all good. All you need is love. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's two songs that's kind of like pertaining into this episode. It's all you need is love as well as you got me so hypnotized the way your body moving round and round. <laughs> I don't know the rest. But <laughs> number three, food you would eat off your partner's toes. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god! Like I don't, I don't have a foot fetish. So first of all, it would take me a lot to get there. If I have to go all the way down there to your toes, okay, um, it would have to be something probably really acidic because I'm a, I'm a chef also. And You're like chef. lemon. It would have to be, yeah. It would have to be like really tart and fruit and juicy to like override any other things that might be happening down there. Feet sensory, so, like I mean, so, yeah. It would no. It would have to be like strawberries, and it would have oh. to be like like the texture would have to be have to be like thick so i'd probably be doing like strawberries and honey ah, or like some fruit parfait happening down there fruit parfait I would doing, for the feet i would i would cook something <laughs> make something and i throw it on him okay my mine would probably be durian <laughs> oh shoot oh my god durian is a fruit from thailand it's super stinky, so I feel like I won't smell the feet if the durian is on the toes. Uh, number four, what's the kinkiest thing you've ever done? Oh, my God. Okay. I don't know if it's considered, like, super kinky or anything, but I was with some friends, and we went to, like, a BDSM party. Ooh. Yeah, and it was, like, a club, actually, but it was, like, semi – it was private. Mm-hmm. So we went went into – it was my first time, and I, I'm one of those people that I'm very curious about everything. Thing and I don't judge right. people or anything. So they brought me into this, and it was very interesting to see all these different environments. You, you know? have dom looks, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, it's the hair and makeup. <laughs> yeah, I can totally see you in all leather and like. I do. I do like. A, yeah, most of the time I'm wearing black. Half the time, but and leather. Telling too. people what to do <laughs> <laughs> through hypnosis. No, Number kidding. five. <laughs> have you ever called someone younger than you, daddy? Oh my God! No, I don't know. I don't know about that one. I don't. Have I ever talked? No, I don't. Maybe. I, maybe I can't remember. I no. definitely have. You have. Oh my God! Good yeah. for you, Daddy. I, you are so cute. I love that. <laughs> I think it's probably because in my brain I'm thinking you're younger than me, and I, I actually am thinking I'm the mommy. <laughs> You, you are the, the mommy. mommy. I don't know if I really like You're this. You're mommy. You're giving sugar mama vibes. <laughs> uh, would you date younger guys? I'd be open to it. Not too much younger. Mm-hmm. Not too much younger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you can <laughs> ask me one question, what would that be? What gets you excited in the morning and like gets you up during the day and like what makes you tick and what makes you like motivated? Ooh, wow. That's a beautiful question. At first, when you were like, what gets you wake up in the morning? I'm like, coming. (laughs) 
<laughs> for real, for real, it's really I'm I'm excited about life. Mm-hmm. Like my life is amazing. You know, of course I have struggles. Of course I pay bills, do yes. taxes. It's tax season, yes. so you know I have stresses. But like overall, my life is freaking amazing, and I'm grateful every morning. Yes. I wake up and I feel really grateful. I look over to my partner and I'm grateful. Um, and I think really what gives me what keeps me going is the idea that I have in my head of like. I am creating a sex positive movement, a, a cause that I care so deeply about because of all of my struggles with sexual anxiety in the past and where I am now, and how much sexual wellness has fuel my life. I want everyone to have the same thing. Yeah. So that, like, the idea of like me moving forward this cause. It definitely gets me going. Yes, yeah. I feel, and I feel like that's why we're aligned. I want to change the world. Yes, like yeah. we're both very purpose driven and yeah. wanting to like transform people, transform the world, and it's it's a purposeful life. It's a great that's life. Oh, girls! Yes. Okay, three songs <laughs> in this episode. I don't know. I'm on a roll. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm so honored to be here and to share my gifts with you and with everyone and with the world too. It's it's such a pleasure. Where can everyone yeah. find you? They can go to my website, actually, which is www.pannyway.com. And that's spelled P-A-N-N-E-Y-W-E-I.com. But I'm on social media also yes. at Pannyway. Yes. Contact <laughs> Panny Way so she can show you the way <laughs> Thank with you. hypnosis. Well, my love, you know, I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions because we want to answer your questions. I know this episode has been different because every episode we answer your sex and relationship questions. But this was more about showing you how hypnotherapy could potentially help people of different sexual issues, relationship issues, body image issues, and so forth. So this is a little bit different, but we want to hear from you. So ask me questions on my website, lovebites.co. Click ask, ask away. You can ask via DMs on my Instagram. You can ask under the comments on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends if you love my podcast because we really, we really love creating and growing this community. So thank you so much and have an orgasmic day. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This was, this was Love Bites. Love Bites. By Dr. Tara. Follow Dr. Tara on social media at lovebites.co. Have an orgasmic day.